This conference will now be recorded. There we go. Then we have, we have Dale and Scott on the line. Okay, I'd like to open the June 6, 2022 regular council meeting to order. Call to order at 7 p.m. Would you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I think we have one addition to the agenda tonight, and we're going to include that. Uh, it is Habitat for Humanity. Um, and that'll be under correspondence in letter B. Are there any other additions or corrections to the agenda? If not, would anyone like to make a motion to accept the agenda with the one addition of the Habitat for Humanity tonight? I'm going to accept the agenda with the addition of Habitat here. Thank you, Councilor Ash. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. And seconded by Councilor Norman. Can you call the roll, please, Stephanie? Councilor Webb? Aye. Councilor Allen? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Norman? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, are there any presentations tonight? None. I don't have any uh, mayor's report, but um, today's kind of a special day. Um, and June 6, 1944, 78 years ago today, ski day. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember all those people that gave their lives and, and, and fight for our freedom, especially in light uh, of our Memorial Day weekend last weekend and, and uh, those people that were over there um, kind of set an example for us today and how we could move forward and, and uh, without any fear and and and, uh, and serve others. So just wanted to recognize D-Day uh, 78 years ago. So. Okay, are there any council or committee meeting reports? No. I have one. Okay, Councilor Webb. <laughs> All right, the Public Works Committee met uh, on the 24th last month. Uh, they they just kind of reviewed what the budget stat status was, where we were at, the uh, not state and Louisiana funding. Everybody's aware of kind of how that's going to play out. Uh, we had a Election of officers. Uh, Sheila Parrott is the secretary. She'd kind of been the ad hoc secretary, but we figured we'd better make it formal. And then Michael Calhoun is the new chair. And they were, I don't know if they were going to submit a formal recommendation to council or not. Uh, some of them were talking about uh using the fee and lieu funds for that maple street repairs where the sidewalks are really slumped where the culverts having an issue um i have mixed thoughts on that myself but uh anyhow that was something that they were kind of proposing that we should look at so, or at least flesh out between you know look, have staff kind of give us some guidance so you know we need to fix the issue before we fix the sidewalk but somebody said well you kind of got a deficient sidewalk so maybe we need to fix it regardless so. all right that's about all i had thank you councilor webb i i just your first uh paragraph or your first <clears throat> first part of your report you mentioned louisiana i didn't hear what the uh committee said about louisiana avenue they're they were just looking at the funding um you know kind of firming up what funding we have 
just just generally talking about it. Oh, okay. I mean, it kind of tied in with the other two where we are doing the engineering work. And so. Okay, thank you, Dale. Um, I did not attend parts because it was canceled for May. Um, lots of scheduling conflicts. We did have one uh, member resign, I believe. So. Okay. You know, did they, are they sending in a thing? If they sent it to me, oh. Marissa just stepped down. Oh, okay. Cemetery is this Thursday, so I'll have a report next time. Okay. Thank you, Jar. <clears throat> The senior board meetings is coming Friday, and I'm, I have a class at the school bus barn for extended training. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make that one either, but I'll try to meet with the board chair and, and others that maybe I could bring back something on the side. So, okay, are there any topics on the floor tonight? I have none. Consent agenda for acceptance, cemetery committee minutes for April 2022, cemetery committee meeting minutes for May 2022. Any questions or discussions? It's two meeting minutes. I don't think so. There was something I found that was a little bit wrong, but I might not be able to remember it now. I'll have to Stephanie when I find it again. They're really not. That's there. So for committee meeting minutes to come to you guys, those are just for you saying I've read them. Okay. They, their committee is who approves it and says this is a true reflection of what happened in our meeting. Right. I, I, I was more referring to the council stuff, but I, just, okay. I can't remember where it was right now. Okay. Wrote it down. I think it's just a wording thing. Okay. I thought you were talking about the cemetery. Right. Is there a motion to accept these two meeting minutes? Motion to accept the cemetery meeting minutes as written for April 1st and 2nd, as paid for April, April and May of 2022. Thank you, Councilor Norman. Is there a second? A second. Councilor Allen is seconded. Would you call the roll, please, Stephanie? Councilor Norman? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councilor Allen? Aye. Councilor Webb? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Consent agenda for approval. City Council meeting minutes for May 2nd, 2022. And City Council meeting minutes for May 15th, 2022. Any questions, discussions, or corrections? Anyone like to make a motion and accept these two meeting council meeting minutes? I will make a motion that we accept the council meeting minutes for May 2nd and May 16th, 2023. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Councilor Norman. Did you call the roll, please, Stephanie? Councilor Webb? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councilor Norman? Aye. Aye. Motion Any unfinished business tonight? No. New business, Intercultural Society of Vernonia, Spencer Park. A July request, found on page 12. I read that, but I couldn't tell who signed at the bottom. Stacy. Like Stacy Pelser's. How do you get on Okay. <laughs> oh, Sorry. I'm looking at this. That looked like an S. Yeah, um, I wasn't sure what that was at the bottom. So thanks for helping with that. <laughs> and they do have um, uh, licensed servers for any alcohol that's going to be served. I didn't add that because it kind of has some personal information on it. I didn't want it to be in the packet. 
So I think they're going to have a, a actual vendor and that person will have to come with the perimeter OLCC. Doesn't the chief usually get involved if it's alcohol? Yeah. I'll have to sign off on that. Yeah. They'll have to have three food vendors because that's the requirement with OLCC. You have to have three substantial food vendors to kind of soak up the alcohol. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I really want alcohol involved in a kid's 4th of July thing. That's just kind of my first thought. But... Well, yeah. Well, apparently it's a it's a kind of, I think it's a brewer, like a brewery. It's a kegerator hearse. It's a hearse with taps out of the side of it. Oh. <laughs> Perfect and for a you plan on parking it where? Well, so their whole event is in the grandstands football area. Right. Their stage is typically backed by the softball fence. Yeah. So that would be their perimetered area. Won't be in the skate park part, won't be in the fields because that's where everyone kind of lays out their blankets and it can't be kind of where the sequoias are because that's usually the line for the fire department. It's just the one day for the four or five hours there? Yep. Just five, and do nine thirty and they shut have down. Tug of war and all that stuff. Right. And so he'll have to be perimetered so people would access him by you know <laughs> the perimeter. Are we going to have police force on duty that time? Yeah. So Sean, so um, Chief and Sean and I have talked about you know requesting assistance like we do for Jamboree since we are so limited in our number. Okay. Seeing if someone will come hang out for the fourth year. But one of our people will be here. Yeah. Saying, okay. Yeah. But usually some backup in case you them upset or happen. See the fire department's there too. Yeah, they are. But I mean, he means I think for enforcement of the yes. first keg. Right. Went south or something. I don't know. Funny that she didn't include that in her application. No, I think she's. I think because he'll come with his own separate application for the same. Oh. Right in the same area, but it he he wasn't ready at the time of this. They did submit the OLCC liquor servers, servers licenses with this. So maybe in, you know, maybe in. I think I missed the meeting one. of the 20th. They'll have, they'll have to, or they won't yeah. be able to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and possible use of the snack shack. So, yeah. And what are they having to pay fees for this, Joe said, or is this a, a well typically see a total on this type of thing? We usually city sponsor it because they don't really have a budget, it's all just to put on activities for the group. Um, so it's like Jamboree where we don't really charge other than, um, you know, if they were going to use the space inclusive or excluding people, but this is kind of inviting everyone. Are we going to be able to get like that small dumpster down there from waste management again or something for garbage or? Yeah, typically when we have smaller fairs like salmon festival or one day events, we just load the garbage in a pickup and go put it into a franchise dumpster so they can do the same thing. Our city hall ones are never really full because we just throw out such little, so they just all their garbage somewhere for the one day events for jamboree we do take we do bring in the big ones but that's three days that i i know we used to have one sitting down there we did but people kept putting home garbage in it yeah so we've tried to not do that we did have one there during skate park but that was kind of our helping them out skin in the game um because it doesn't cost us anything so there is no alcohol allowed in the parks typically yeah with a light with a permit okay yeah so like if you had a wedding some at hawkins they we've had alcohol out there in hawkins park they just usually have to have servers perimeter that they're going to be allowing people to mingle with it not the whole area okay i think it'll be i think it's more kitschy and like a 
draw, but not really a hangout place to get tanked, basically. <laughs> and any other discussion or questions? If not, would anyone like to make a motion to accept this application tonight? I'll make the motion that we accept it. Uh, approve the application for the Intercultural Society for the uh, stand area use for the 4th July bash, uh, um, July 4th, 2022, from 5 to 9.30 p.m. Okay, so moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Second's been made. Would you call the roll, please, Stephanie? Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councillor Webb? Aye. Councillor Allen? Aye. Councilor Ash. Aye. Councilor Norman. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Business from the departments. None tonight. Moving right along. Ordinances and resolutions. Wow. <laughs> Correspondence. Uh, a letter from Randy Holtz regarding crosswalk. Can be found on page 13, and I believe that's the last page of their packet. I read it. Yeah, me and I agree. If we can talk ODOT into it, and we'll probably have to wait till they're coming through town redoing all of the crosswalk stuff. I think we should notify them. There was two young girls, probably ten or eleven, giggling on their phones, diagonally across in it toward from the mini mart back toward the park, and they weren't even looking at all. I probably stopped, and they're still not looking. Where they're going. So I think you're getting a lot of mini mart cross traffic there. I think Randy's got a good point. Um, I don't know what we do. We put it on ODOT or something? Yeah, so I sent an email to my contact at ODOT. The tricky part's going to be that um, there's no cross. You really need one right in the middle of that block. Otherwise, the kids aren't even going to use it. I would say. Walking, literally crossing yeah. at the end of Myers. Yeah. Me. Yeah. 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 They're going straight from the big walnut tree mm -hmm. to Mini Mart. Um, so I don't know, although Randy made a good point, in banks there's tons of crosswalks that don't hit an intersection, and that's also Highway 47, so I kind of presented that, and we'll just see what they say. Um, and we could forego one of the other ones. So there's the one just Grant at, is it Grant Avenue where brewers live, and that there's one there. Well, it has a ramp on the hell, old health center side and it runs straight into a curb on Meyer's side. So that's not really, and I, you know, only during Jamboree do I really see people using that one. So if they wanted us to get rid of that one and do one there, we could, so I just presented the options and what we're looking at doing for the safety of it. Randy would really like it to have like a flashing light kind of like the school's one, if ODOT would be willing to do that. I don't know that they will. That's um, like a safety grant for them or something, huh? Yeah, so we'll just wait and hear back from them. But I did kind of ask the question. You want them to come out and look at it physically? or? Well, I want to talk to them about it first, and then they'll do an on-site. They'll probably just piggyback it when they do the ramps or something for coming out and meet. If they could come on like a nice day outside school hours, maybe. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually when they're doing the ramps, mm -hmm. um, they're here in the like after lunch to the afternoon checking stuff. So I can just make the case like come at 3.30 to see yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> how does Mr. Holtz know how we responded? Do you let him know that we sent a letter to ODOT? Or? Oh, when he handed it to us, I told him I was doing it. So he knows that I put in an email about it. Yeah, I definitely support it. He also, it's a need. Yeah, he also handed me his list since Warwick has still not fixed any of the lights. He, he gave us a list in October of the street lights that were out that he had noticed. We gave it to ODOT, or I mean to West O, and none of them have been fixed. So we're going to revisit that conversation too. Okay. Good. Yeah, it looks like to me the sidewalk crossing mini mart and where the city has a parking lot would be yeah the best to catch 
the most. They're just typical kids. They're not going to walk in oh. the they have to, and that would yeah. put it where it would get used the most without people jaywalking. Yeah. And that existing crosswalk that's closest to the Rock Creek Bridge, that's, it's dark there. There's a blind spot there. Yeah. It kind of come if you're not paying really close attention, yeah. especially to somebody standing on, let's see, I guess the south side of the highway on the Myers auto body side. Yeah. Um, and if you don't see them and they walk out, it could be problems. Yeah. So yeah, I'll bring you guys more information when I get yeah. an answer or yay we'll come out or we won't or <laughs> okay letter b habitat for humanity and last week joe both josette and i got emails from uh Jennifer. anderson and uh you have a pass out on it now we still requesting the sixteen thousand they were talking about no, so this is a little bit different. She doesn't put an actual request amount, but she does list it increase to the build as being 19.5. The concern staff has about that is in the interim rule, we can't find a way to just give it. Um, the other thing is kind of setting a weird precedent that without, it'd be great if we had like a low income housing program where we put money in the, from the city budget into it specifically for moving low-income housing forward and applications like this, but we don't. So it's gonna look like we just picked one and paid for it in a one-off, and that doesn't sit well with me being able to, to defend it very well. Um, Cause some, some communities have, you know, fun pools of money where they put money into it to participate in this way or to, when one of these habitat houses comes up, they give a stipend to promote it, you know, or it could be any sweat equity. It doesn't have to be habitat. Um, I know St. Helens and my husband built sweat equities. The city of St. Helens helped, but they had a pool of money that they allocated money to every year, and that's what could be used for it. So it's kind of a... I'm sure she's got money from somebody on his ARPA funds. Can we reach out and find out? If St. Helens, Rainier, Plask, and I are someone that's given money and how they've done it? I don't know that Habitat, other than the national version, got would get money. I mean, from directly from small towns, if they've donated toward this and how they did it. Well, that's what I'm telling you. In When my husband did sweat equity with Community Action, there's different cities do a fund within their budget. So say, it's like street beautification, but say it's low-income housing and we put $3,000, $3,000, $3,000. So when this kind of ask comes up, the, the council had a pool of money specifically earmarked for that kind of project and program. But this is gonna look like we're paying for per increase and not Milstein's or not whoever else is also building at the same time. That's why I'm, and I told Jennifer this, I said, you can ask, but I'm not a huge, so is there an option of, of foregoing SDC fees? There, There is, but then you're doing the same thing. Then what do we say to the next person that comes and says their building costs, package costs more? Well, I'm just wondering what the city did when we built the house for Diener. That was all private. So That was private, private funding and... Um, the Amish, or actually the Mennonites. So you didn't waive any fees for them? No. They did that whole project with private donations and the Mennonites. So it's kind of hard because whatever we do, we'll kind of set a precedent for the next ask. The only time we ever forgave SDCs was when the school was being built. The council at the time forgave some of those SDCs, but it was more kind of a clerical discussion on how many equivalent dwelling units the school was versus 
how much they were really going to tax the system with their combined campus when they had all the individual buildings. And so that was kind of a legitimate case at that point because they already had buildings that were using the system. They were just combining them all to one bigger campus. So what you're saying, basically, there's no way to spend ARPA money on Habitat for Humanity? Well, there you could do it. The risk is you're doing a one-off. Right. You're picking one winner, and no one else will win in this way. And that's the concern for staff is, don't think is it defensible? You don't think that it being a nonprofit versus a private individual is a delineator? But it, it is for a private individual. It's not like we're giving it to the bigger umbrella and they're going to use it how they see fit. Mm -hmm. It's that we know there's one home going in with this one family. Mm -hmm. That's the tricky part. And we didn't see anywhere in there where it could be used for that. That it just dumped straight to them without a whole bunch of hiccups. I also looked up... So there was this group called the Alliance, which was talking about how municipalities can help nonprofits serve their communicate communities with the ARPA funds, but it's not a one, it's a more giving it to the umbrella and not, and even if we did that, we would know it was going, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's not like promoting the Columbia Pacific Food Banks, you, distribution to our citizens by giving them money to further distribute, it's more one person. So basically we should probably set up a, a fund and have people apply for it. Well, or just start stockpiling, even if it's a little bit amount every time and then come up with whatever the policy is gonna be. When a sweat equity group comes into town, you're willing to give them $5,000 out of that or something, I don't know, you know, be some sort of program to do it repeatedly with justification, I guess. That would, that's just me. Well, we only have a certain amount of time to spend ARPA funds, right? Right, and I think, I was looking at the minutes, Had I think we only have, well, we haven't, we aren't on the second batch yet. But what did it say in the minutes? I just saw that. It was like left. We were hoping hmm. to use that for the sidewalks. For the, what I, for the ramps. We got another batch coming next year, or this July or August. We do. I'm thinking if we fool around too long, then they're not going to build too many habitat for humanity houses by the time that we're going to be out of ARPA funds, right? No, they're going to build one. Right. So. Yeah. Is she, uh, is there any timeline on this? I'm just looking for some help. No, and the other thing that's hard for me is I get Columbia County is its own habitat group. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever habitat won't cover, if it's the way all other sweat equity programs run, the, they basically try to have the person, the person get has a mortgage, right? It's not free. Um, but they basically try to move them in with the most equity. Um, what worries me a little bit is Habitat is a huge national organization. And we're going to give $19,000 when that organization's pretty broad and has a lot of funding behind it. She hasn't asked for 19. She's. Uh... No, she just said that's the increase to the build. She didn't really put a request at all in a number. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember when she was here and gave the presentation. Yeah. It was a year ago or more. I don't think Councilor Ash or Councilor Norman were involved at the time. Yeah. I can't remember. She was She was what, requesting a, a waiving of the SDCs at that point. that it? Legal you remember was that, JR? Yeah. Legal was supposed to get back to us on it. We aren't allowed to, unless it's a legitimate thing like the clerical thing with the school, you're really setting yourself up to be forced to forgive them for others if you do it for one outside of some program or plan or policy. That's kind of the risky thing about ARPA is everyone wants it, but whatever you do, 
you're going to have to do it over and over again, really. So they know they're putting in sidewalks and curb. I don't know if they've even turned anything in, have they? They haven't turned anything in. So yeah. They're going to get a little surprise there, probably, too. Yeah, but that's everyone. Yeah. So that's the thing. I understand that it's Habitat for Humanity, but if we make any exceptions for this project and this one person, I wasn't talking this, about I know, exceptions. with this one citizen, then everyone else will be coming and the people who've been here constantly crying saying that it's too expensive yeah. will have a case. Right. I'll probably put the stuff in instead of pay the fee, I imagine. That'd be great. Well, what is the council's wishes for um, both myself and maybe the city administrator respond to to Jennifer. Um, well, it's not real clear what she's asking for, except for she's insinuating that it's 19, 20,000 more than expected. Well, she just says any assistance would be appreciated, like anything to help, I guess, offset. Right. Like so we could basically explain to her that we don't, we can't really at this time help out with any ARPA funds, I guess. Well, we can. We just we can, but worried about setting a precedence, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, what's stopping the John Smith who walks in the door tomorrow and he see, reads these minutes from saying? And you're going to give me 19.5 or you're going to give me whatever you gave so and so because that's really what we're setting up well i've said it before the uh, i still would like to do something for the community-based street level because that was kind of the um, spirit of this is the feds were hoping a lot of this would hit street level we don't have a million counselors and programs to give it to um, so I'm not against doing it. I just don't want to cause a big waterfall, but I, I doubt we'd have a waterfall of Habitat for Humanity people. I guess we could have other nonprofits come in. Yeah. Community Action Team has the same program. Yeah. They built the houses that this is getting built next to mm -hmm. with that sweat equity program. Community Action uh, federally funded also, just like Habitat or um they're funded a few different ways mostly through hud housing and urban development they haven't broke ground they haven't got a permit mm -mm. so i would i'm leaning toward liking to help them but i want to see probably some move forward to where i know it's going to happen so you kind of hear what i'm saying give us a little more time to see how we could possibly uh, set this up where it's not going to create issues yeah, you know, if they're gonna if they need a permit and they're breaking ground, I think that would probably be a better time for us to reconsider this again. Or um, it's a lot of times these situations you could we could give our funds out. And if it I think happen. How are you gonna get your funds back? Yeah, I think she probably has to figure out what the loan and all of that's gonna be ahead of filing a permit. There's probably a construction loan before. So she she's gonna have to say what the what she has the materials and sweat equity and what the construction is gonna cost way ahead of filing for a permit. I read about them online, like the people that they take over what's what's left basically and finance it at a cheaper interest rate and stuff, but they still finance it. Yeah, that is what becomes their mortgage. And they can sell it, I think, after is it a year or is it two? I think it's like a year. I don't know. They can sell it and leave if they want. And whatever Habitat's markup is. Yeah. They've got to make their money somehow. Yeah. They have an administrative fee or something probably. Yeah. Yeah. So well, anyway, I don't know. That's my thought. Maybe we like to see them actually get a building permit, start moving forward, come back. We still have more funds next year. They would, yeah. that would be in a way not promising a donation because in order for them to get the permit, they have to pay all of these. Yeah. Well, they're not asking to waive fees or they're asking for money to pay fees. Is that what they're doing? They're no, I think they're asking, well, that's what she was originally asking for was right. the saving of the fees. I think what she's saying now is the package 
for, for the lumber package for all the trusses and everything is $19,500 more than it was when they started. What you saying? Did they, did they, okay, family's been selected, I read that. Yeah, and there's an article in the paper about the family that. Oh, there was, mm -hmm. second edition? Yeah, the one that's right out there now. Just came out. I haven't read it yet. Yeah. So, you don't need a motion on this. Um, it'd be nice to have some sort of formal decision. That way it's in the record and we can okay. see this is what they decided. Yeah, it isn't me making it up. So whatever you want me, my response to be to her, yeah. if you guys come up with what you want that response to be. Councilor Webb. Comment, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor Webb. So I would suggest if we were gonna entertain doing something like this, we would, we would actually develop a policy and I kind of agree with staff, if it's just gonna be a one-off event, it's really not a policy. <laughs> you know, you can't set a policy around that. If you set a policy and then set a funding source for it, but we all just sat through the budget and we know where we're at there. So uh, this ARPA money is gonna be here and gone. So it's, you know, unless the rest of the council wanted to set aside a large amount of money to put into a plan. But uh, I think we know we have needs elsewhere too. So anyhow, I'm just thinking we got if we were going to do something, we really needed to set up the policy and think it through first. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I feel torn because I I agree with that, but I also do I guess feel what Jr. say. I wish there it was a way that was a little more straightforward to be able to help. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I want to put it to bed, but I realize that maybe the what she's asking isn't the clear path. <laughs> Not helpful, I know. <laughs> I don't see where the city's got the extra money to throw at it, to be honest with you. I would say we try to get together and maybe help put some time in to get it accomplished. Right. I mean, we could all volunteer to yes. build it. We've done that. Well, the budget has nothing to do with ARPA. There's no ARPA money in the budget, right? Not next year's ARPA. No, but you have a few pretty large projects coming down that we don't really know what those will flush out, what the economy will do to those being Louisiana. I understand that. Um, and then whatever skin in the game we're gonna need for the construction and fix of the springboard project or lining the manholes that are leaking in the water table, that's kind of an unknown because the vacuum testing hasn't been completed. So there's unknowns that it could be all that money is easily used up in the city's infrastructure projects that make it better for everyone for the next 15 years. Could be that there's flex in that and there is extra money. We won't know until we kind of get into those if that other money will suffice or not. So I could just say at this time we're she's a local chapter for Habitat. So where's she getting her funding then? If it's not coming from the national, it is. It is coming from the national Habitat, the to the Columbia County chapter. She hasn't been hitting up these other areas for ARPA money. You mean for her houses in in those towns? I don't know what she's done. Well, or just all of them, just for you know, like Latham come up and got some money. Oh, supposed to help. as an organization, I don't think she did. I think she's she came specifically to ours because they have a project here. I don't think she went to the other towns and just asked for funding for Columbia County Habitat. I'd be curious if maybe you could ask her because I'd be curious of how they did it if they did help her with some ARPA funds. I can ask my people too. Yeah, I can ask if she asked or received funds from ARPA from other jurisdictions. I don't believe she did, but. 
I kind of had that feeling when she was here last time that she was making the circuit, but maybe I was wrong. So I'm going to ask the council for a general consensus uh, tonight, and I'm going to start it off. My general consensus, uh, my feeling is that, unfortunately, at, at this time, uh, the city of Vernonia cannot help her project with Habitat for Humanity for the uh, building site here in Vernonia. So I'm going to, that's going to be my my take on it. My take is I'd like to get a little more information on it and I'd like to make sure the project's moving forward with a building permit and I, I would like to help them out even if it's only a portion of that. I'd like somehow to help them out with something out of these ARPA funds. Um, I'm uh, I'm not for it. I think it's kind of a sticky situation that would take a little more, a lot of more lay, uh, movement on our end to really flesh out and make it fair, equitable. And I think, like again, uh, we'd be so limited on funds. It's it's just a one-off. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I feel pretty tied. I feel. Like the current ask doesn't feel like something we can do, but I would like, I guess, maybe to think on it or try to get some information to bring back. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you from here. Um, I said I would like us to keep thinking on it or try to get some information to bring back. Oh, okay. I don't really want to fully put it to bed, I guess. And you pretty well said what you want to say. Yeah, and I'm basically behind what you said, Rick, but like, if they come up with more details, maybe we can find a way we can help. But right now, right. our hands are tied. Yeah, something that would make a more unique ask, I guess. I think we have a general consensus then. Okay. Oh. Okay. To the administrator report. Okay, so the transfer switch test is going to happen Monday, June 13th. Um, like I said before the meeting started, they'll do an hour and a half running everything in the system on the generator, and then they'll do a two hour following that, they'll switch us back to the Bowick power and do a two hour load test with a thing they hook to it outside. Um, so we're excited about that. It'll be ready to go. Um, the CDBG was submitted on the 31st of May. We'll know sometime in late summer if we're awarded for the new freezers and the purchasing of the protein, shelf-stable protein, some personal care items. Um, so yeah, that's all submitted and all the documents are there. So fingers crossed we get it. Skate Park, I received an update from Don Rose, who told me that now the polls are slated to arrive mid-June. Was mid-May, now it's mid-June. So fingers crossed, we'll, we'll have a lit skate park by 4th of July. <laughs> Just seems like everything's stalled. Um, the cemetery, the Memorial Day ceremony was smaller than usual in length and attendance. Uh, we'd like to thank J.R. Allen for welcoming the guests and leading us through the pledge. Thank you to Pastor Sam Huff for the opening and closing prayers and to Damian Cox for his Memorial Day address from the American Legion and to Tommy Sherman for being our sound guy. Um, we had a lot of discussions up there, committee members and just citizens and the Legion members about things we can do to have the local Legion become more part of it and do the gun salute also had cemetery committee members that are interested in getting us back on the flyover uh, map. So they're looking into that um, because you can just get them to do the flyover over your area at certain times, but you have to get into the program. And we did have that in the past, but it just fell off because there's 
not enough people um, handling the different elements. But it looks great and it was beautiful. We got the flags down on Wednesday um, with a three person crew and then my children learned how to fold the American flag, 34 of them. Oh, so it was great. I thought it was. They were like, seriously? And I'm like, we're doing it. Um, so street trees, we haven't had any movement that kind of was on the list and then kind of fell, just stalled from council kind of determining we're getting more information from if they would be willing to do the op whole open bank thing, but we haven't got that information back yet. And Katie still hasn't got back with you? No. So I don't know if she's short timer in it or what. <laughs> um, the OPRD planning grant, uh, Kim Tierney and I finished that up and turned that in. We'll know mid-August at the latest if we're funded for the Lake Campground um, planning grant. What does he ask? How much? Oh, JR, why didn't you call me ahead of time? I'm trying to think. I want to say the max. No, oh, I'd have. I'll have to check my email and tell you. I think we asked for the max, which I want to say was forty thousand. Mm -hmm. Um. And dog water is still. We're still waiting on the dog park water. The guys have just been running around. We had a leak on Heather. It's. The ditch is there, it's barricaded, but we need to get the water in and the dog park water. However, they are getting a stick library or a stick checkout kiosk, which was donated in this cute little, basically covered display with pegs on it where they put sticks, different sticks, and you can just take a stick for your dog and chuck it. And, they're going to refill it. They have this whole program to refill the stick library. And so. Charlie will bring one about four inches around. Right. Eight feet long. <laughs> Try and go through a door. <clears throat> right. Try and hit you in the back of the knee with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be going in soon. And it looks great. So, it'll be a cute addition out there. Um, and then my daughter's graduating from high school. So I am out Wednesday through Friday to try and finish getting our house ready for a get together <laughs> with all of the peeps. Do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah, you ever get back from Jeff on that water tank deal? I yeah, so um, they haven't been dive inspected in a few years. He did have Jonathan go up there and fix the grout that you saw. That's just grout in there. So he cleaned it off and he re-grouted it. Um, but we talked about getting up back on the divers rotation. Yeah, what was the normal rotation? That's what I was Well, they didn't really have one unless there was like a loss, right? They're pumping it up there, it's tracked in the pumps. They can see what's getting sold billable. So unless there's a huge loss or the plant's running for hours on end, then that's what triggers them going and looking for that. I just wonder if they poke a stick down there and find out there's six inches of goo at the bottom or something, you know? Yeah, the last time he said when the diver went in, there was nothing. Mm. It was just water because, I mean, there's not a ton of, I get what you're saying and that's why Jeff's like, oh, the grout. And I said, yeah, JR said he could see it from above and he's, could see the grout was, there was leaves and debris and he's like, okay, well we can re-go do the grout, but there's not really a way for it to get in other than that. Concern, you know, birds sit there and then rain and. Yeah, any sort of filtering in. 45 degree angle on those panels and they put some grout in there years ago and it's all popping out. Yeah, so he did, had Jonathan do that. And then we do, we have to test our water here. They do water testing all the time to see if anything, any contaminants are in there or anything, so. Um, but I'll get figure out what that kind of probably isn't in our budget for the cost of it. But he said it was pretty expensive to get a diver in there because they're it's confined space and all these things. So and then also there's some kids up there. I think uh, chopping cedar and looked like they had kind of did do a big bonfire, but it never got lit over there where those big round blocks were and they moved them out and chopped a bunch of cedar kindling and oh yeah. bonfire we'll have to check that well, out it wasn't a bonfire yet but yeah cut the camera out it's a bonfire up above the uh cemetery, cemetery. water tank oh out of that across in the water tank there's some 
spools of cables and some. Oh, that's from Blue Mountain. That's still up there. Someone brought the cedar up here, though. I think and split it. Like they're gonna build a fire. Weird. Okay. We should just take the cedar away. Yeah, we should probably just get all of it out of there. Like somebody was gonna do something and change their mind, maybe. <laughs> Yikes! That's not good. Okay. Um, and then um, the the Weed Avenue project here. Are we? I know the city you said had some swells we had to do. Are we done with that? Or yeah. So the swales in the one little swale it's got growing media over it because that's the design. Um, and then I believe John Swartz finishing the curb next week. Um, and then I believe they figured out or. They're finishing up the bins right now. Yeah, we had one. We had two different ways they were going to do it. We wanted to offer to the other one that he could also do it that way because the engineer said it met the requirements and clarify his bid, and then they'll pick the bid. Okay, and the, the concrete work up here, the bump out, is that going to start? Or? Yeah, so we got the engineering on that, and Angie told Parker ASAP, get it done. So. And then uh, have you had time to look at the skate park where people congregate for benches or? No, so we put the two picnic tables there. Um, we're kind of noticing the areas they're currently standing, we you could put a bench there. Sitting in the bowl. That, well, or, or they're just standing right on the edge of it. And that's just gonna become another element of grinding if we put it that close. Um, if we put them where people are standing, they'll just jump up on them and grind on the bench. Um, so we haven't figured it out yet. And um, the drinking fountain at the lake still doesn't work. Is it broken? The Which one? As soon as you pull up. Oh, the, the one by the bathrooms? It shouldn't be. I can send them and check that out. The other one's on across or around the lake. on the Yeah, I had, I had that one. Um, I'm just curious if it was broken or something. I don't think it is, but I thought they turned it on. So maybe somebody, maybe they're, I'll have to check and see. Maybe it's on now, but the last time I tried it, there was still nothing there. Okay. That's all I had. Um, okay, thank you. Um, Josette, I want to first talk about the very positive things about downtown corridor and the beautification and the flowers and the the garbage can receptacle covers and everything but i also want to talk about a lot of weeds coming up and if you i've noticed them lately in front of the um pelster building mm -hmm. and that's our property i mean it's theirs to maintain it's theirs to maintain and there's Weeds galore yeah. on the light poles, and it just looks awful. Yeah, we're talking about having it sprayed. Okay, Usually the city staff will go down at least once a year, yeah. do the the planter strip and the curbs and all yeah. that, and get that sprayed. And he actually picked up all the materials for that on Friday. Oh, great! So they are out. Rothman will spray everything. Yeah, that'll help. Get and pulled out before January or something. Like well, and then like on our properties, Mitch, we whacked the entire library and just swept it up. Yeah. So that's another option. And most of the city properties, we maintain them to try and show people like this is how it should be. But yeah. yeah. There's some of them that there's more green down here than there is on top of my garbage can. Exactly. Which doesn't like all. Yeah. Yeah. We Somehow, I don't know how we get it out to them to take care of those. We could send them a notice. It's usually not well received, but I'm like, to me, that just well, I mean, people in it, it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but we're getting to a double standard. Oh no, I'm happy to send. I'm happy to send them a notice. I'm just saying that um, they're going to be in <laughs> barking about it. Potentially to you guys. Yeah, but they're a homeowner on one of the side streets gets. That's true. Gets yeah. it. Yeah. Get it on Main Street. Yeah. We can get and to put them. We can just go and take a picture and send a friendly reminder. Now that it's growing season, you're responsible to keep that from having. Yeah, the city, our, cities invest in time, energy, yeah. and, and funds to help the downtown corridor, and that's helping the businesses as well. And we'll probably, that would work too, because then we could give them like a little bit of a, 
we're going to be in your area doing stuff. Right. We're helping you, but you got to do it yourself too. Right. The worst one I saw, which I didn't notice it until, was the vacant U.S. Bank building. I'm planting stuff there, and I'm looking around like, what the heck? The stuff's this tall around the oh. light pole there. Mm. Yeah, that went in the bank now, is it? Yeah. Not right now. I recently sold, so yeah, it should be hopefully. Made again. Hopefully, sold enough. No, what are we gonna get a group of now? <laughs> Maybe one can help. Mm. I wanted to win the lottery and make it into a really nice Northwest cuisine restaurant, but not in the cards. Do we know what he's gonna do with it? Mm -mm. Not yet. We will. I see a grant <laughs> over there, though. It'd be cool. It'd be cool as an old, like, as a cool, like. Fan, not fancy, but more formal restaurant. It's like steak, like loose steak, steak baked potatoes. I'd like that. Halibut, salmon would be good. Kind of a McMinimum speedle. Yeah. Then I heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, that we, the subway might be changing. I think tomorrow's their last Tomorrow's day. their last day. Oh, wow. So the rumor mill says. Yeah. Yeah I, don't, yeah, I don't know for sure, but that's too bad. Yeah. Okay, got, any other questions there? Yeah, go ahead, Dale. Uh, I want to comment on the reader board. I think it looks really great. I think it's going to be a great asset to the community. Whoever's programming it, I think they're starting to catch on to the contrasting colors to make it pop. It's starting to look pretty good. Thanks, Dale. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I had an individual talk to me about the Stony Point intersection, and I'm, I should have probably looked at my city map to see which side the city limits are, but that is a dangerous intersection in there. This individual said he's been almost hit three times. Stony Point and Keezy? Yes. Yeah, That's going up county. Keezy, and is that in the county or is that? It's county. It's county. Yeah. I don't know if we have any sway there or not, but. What's the proposal fix? Well, I think at the bare minimum, at least a sign that says limited, you know, visibility. Uh, you know, I've seen those. I think there's one on Scatburn Road that says that. Uh, you know. I can I can call County Mike at County Roads and see if he has a sign that his guys can put in. Is that for I mean, people coming down uh, Kesey? People coming going out state towards Kesey, right? People coming uh, off Stony Point, turning, going on the state toward town. Yeah. Either way, way. Oh, or if you turn up Kesey, either way, it is pretty limited. People come yeah. around from up Kesey down, and they're flying. Well, that's so, what I'm yeah. to... I just got it because I'm like, well, so maybe all three, <laughs> all three directions. Well, I mean, you you can see people coming from the right because after they cut the trees there, of course, that might change uh, after it starts growing up. But it's always been tricky going to the left, coming off Stony Point, turning into town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You really can't hesitate there. And if somebody's speeding, things come yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, there's another one maybe. Our limited law enforcement to sit just over the hill and nail a few people, and maybe that'll help. So. Okay. Uh, I did see a thread on Facebook. I know we don't address Facebook, but I think it's a legitimate concern uh, because I saw it when I was out doing the inventories on the sidewalks was handicap access. Um, so that's probably something again back to the public works committee with this fee and loo money um i mean that that's something we really need to kind of wrap our head around because we don't want to end up like the state getting sued because we don't have adequate ramps so um and i so, don't know how you can do them everywhere but at least we should be able to have some routes that these people can use without having to be in the street so do you know where that incident occurred? I didn't read I did. it. Yeah, I I didn't couldn't tell where she said she had her incident. Oh, okay. 
she also said the homeowner came out to check on her. So if it's in front of a residence, it's not the city's sidewalk then to maintain, right? Right. But that's why I'm wondering, like, where is it? Right. Because I don't know of any, uh, aside from this right here and the one little lip in front of the old vape shop, I don't know any on the, they said the main drag had a whole bunch of problems. And I was like, I don't know of that. But then there's also people who say they use it every day and it's fine. Yeah. But, but yeah. On, the, on the peripheral streets, though, where we do have sidewalks, and uh, there again, I think it's, well, we've got an inventory now and we've got some of those areas should be on the map where sidewalks are deficient. And yeah. then we also know where we got deficiencies on uh, curb outs, the ramps. So, and you yeah. know, maybe there's there's an avenue to bring in some money for, you know, safe pathways. And in fact, there is actually, I think, but uh, I think I talked to you about that. We have to have it in our street plans. Yeah. So does the city on residential streets survey the sidewalks and notify homeowners if they need to be remedied? Because we used to get those letters in Portland for our sidewalks and we had to pay to fix them. Yeah, so we haven't, because we have one code enforcement person, we haven't um, done that, but we do now have an inventory. So it'd be a lot easier to do. Um, and just notice people that, you know, well, yeah. we've noticed some businesses and they never did fix it, so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe just an end date and a repercussion. Yeah. Like if it's a fine and then it's because to we be have a, to do it. It's supposed to be $180 a day, I think, after 30 days or something. $500. Yeah. $500. Oh. The first ticket and $500 every day you don't do anything about it. Typically the city yeah, goes okay. and replaces it and then builds it yeah. 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 That's what I would think. Look but at that's that. also bigger cities. Right. Right. I mean, we got like no concrete guy. Yeah. So, but yeah, I can look into that. And we can, I think, I think it'd be good to have public works committee chew on the options for, with that inventory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last thing. Another concerned citizen. I think he talked to. Oh, I think it was a town over in the valley. I don't know. It was Hillsboro, Forest Grove. Somebody's got a skate park, and they mentioned that we need to make sure we have an inspection program and documentation that we are inspecting and doc and documenting that it's in a safe condition because that's where you run into problems if an unsafe condition develops uh, you know we need to take action immediately it's liability mm -hmm. yeah yeah because the liability law doesn't cover us if there's negligence. negligence right so if, we, if we have a feature that fails and we don't address it then it's negligence so but uh, i think a real key point too was having this sheet of paper they're doing that walkthrough they're putting that check mark putting the date in there that yes i did physically go and look at this yeah well we could easily line that inspection up with our ceiling twice a year Probably should i wonder if it needs to be more timely than that do you think you inspect it more than twice a year uh yeah i'm thinking because, you know, you never know when something were to pop up. But what do you mean pop up? Like the concrete's fitted? Or are you checking like the rails? Yeah, you know, a rail failure or who knows, you know, an act of vandalism that makes something sharp. That, you know, we should have caught. Um, we might want to talk to one, some other entity that's doing this and see what their <laughs> program is, what the... Yeah, I would talk. And was it Sam? No. So did this other person know of a city that had that program? I could, I'll, I'll ask them and, and, and forward you the entity. Okay, that'd be awesome because then I'm not just chasing it without uh, calling and asking everyone with a skate park. Do you yeah. have an inspection program? 
Well, for yeah. a monthly program, we probably should just include the swing sets and everything. You know, he went through and checked everything. Well, yeah. yeah. And that was well, in that discussion. Sorry, Dale, go ahead. And that person mentioned the same thing. It was uh, all your kind of playground equipment, and everything like that. So I don't know what the court views as timely. So, right. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Anything else for the CA? Uh, I just wanted to thank Joe Sat and Casey and all the volunteers for the work up there at the cemetery. It was nice. Um, I know Joe said does a lot behind the scenes on that and getting ready for it and volunteering. So, and so does her husband and, and uh, Waylon and everybody to help put the polls up and counselor Webb and I'm missing people, um, George. Yeah. And who else? Bill Hansen. Yeah. And anyway, John O'Donohue. It was just a good volunteer effort, and then uh, uh, Mitch for getting it all mowed up up yeah. there, and just uh, looked good. Did get to set a couple aluminum flagpoles, which were nice and light. But <laughs> those are going to be a game changer for sure. <laughs> if we can lock them down, <laughs> right? Well, we talked about building a housing inside the shed on the wall so that they're not outside because that they're just going to get ripped off and scrapped. But yeah, or a pin or something that you could. Yeah, for a small town, I think we do a good job up there, at least trying to do something and show our respects to people yeah. that have died uh, yeah. defending our country. So, yeah. and uh, Damien, I thought he did yes. a good job. Mm -hmm. Damien Cox. And, He's excited for the Legion to build up and take a more bigger role. Yeah. Sam Huff and everybody that yeah. came out there. It's just, yeah. Okay. Probably Ben. Ben was probably up there before. And did all the mapping and all that for the Lions. And, and we did get the people that were on Facebook that their veteran didn't have a flag. I did contact them behind the scenes and um, get their names. And I did. I did want to mention the three wheelers and and the oh yeah, Pioneer Boy Scouts and the Legions. They take care of the Pioneer. I actually went up there and walked around and it, and it looked nice and it was respectful. They had flags out for the for the veterans and stuff. And uh, anyway, they do a lot of stuff up there. And some of our cemetery committee was like, "Can you please make sure we thank them?" Which yeah. we did, and, and I'm doing it again now. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the CA or, or uh, items from the mayor or our counselors? Kind of all cover that in two categories. If I went to Florida, it was hot, humid, but the coasts were nice. And it's good to get back to Drizzly, Bernonia for a while, but yeah. the rain's starting to get old again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can get down there. That Gulf side beaches are pretty nice. Anybody else? Action item summary. Okay. I just put that. Just kind of it. I saw you right I know. I just have like a paper with a million things written on it. What the heck? That is so weird. Oh, here it is. It's on the very bottom. Okay. Um, staff's going to check for the bonfire and remove any debris up by the uh, water tank. We're going to check the drinking fountain by the lake uh, bathroom that it's working and if it needs new guts or what's got the hold up on that. Um, send out code letters to downtown uh, that need to fix the weed growing. 
Uh, check with County Roads if they have any signage they can do for the intersection of Kesey State and Stony Point. And then check with whoever Dale gives me the inspection information or other agencies and what they're going to do with the inspections. Am I missing anything? Uh, Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, to respond to Jennifer. So is that dead then now? Because it was three to two on our opinion. Are we bringing back info? Well, I'm thinking at this point she didn't specifically ask for something. So we're just going to say at this time the city can't help with this request. We're not sure what the request exactly is. Um, and then ask her for more information. Did she inquire with other agencies? Are there other cities that are contributing to her cause for Columbia County? Habitat for Humanity, because maybe that's something we could do budgetarily in the future. You know, ask her kind of pick her brain on the things. You gave me some questions to ask her. She knows that another city contributed with ARPA funds. Maybe that's how they did that. Yeah. So it would be like, what's. So I have, did you receive funds from ARPA from other jurisdictions? Mm -hmm. um, and then ask if there's, oh, I'm looking for. Uh, more info on the project moving forward, like what's your shortfall, what does the program contain, what does the person get left with, kind of that kind of information, because I think that's the missing component. If we knew, hey, the person's going to have a mortgage of this amount without help or a mortgage of this amount with help and just look into that stuff, but it, as of right now, we don't, three out of five of you guys said, unfortunately, we cannot help at this time. So that will be our statement as of right now, but then I can ask her the other questions and get more information. How do other cities benefit you guys? Or do they do it in their budgets? Do they do a stipend every year that just pays in their skin in the game? You know, is the membership kind of pay in thing like Columbia Economic Team, all the cities put in, right? or CC writer. Right, right. And I don't know how, I think they're probably a lot like community action teams where it's money from the Housing and Urban Development Department of the federal government, but I don't know that for sure. I'd like to know when they're gonna break ground. But... Well, I think they have to get a permit first. So they're pro I think I'm right in that they probably need to know what money they have and don't have before they apply for a permit, but that's just me. <laughs> Still trying to gather that up. Right, before they'll know, because then they'll have to get the loan assured ahead of time, right? I mean, most people don't. You have to know what you're going to end up having to take out on your mortgage, so. Okay. So before I adjourn for the uh, June 20th meeting, I'd like to uh, see who whose turn it is to pick citizen of the month. And so oh. I have to look they can I don't know get prepared for that. So, okay. I'll send you an email. I think it's Councilor Webb's turn. I think you're right. I think so. <laughs> he might be. I wanted to confirm that. Nope, the city council meeting is on the 21st. Oh, okay. It's Tuesday, the 20th is a holiday. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, Monday okay. All or something? Yeah, because statewide is Juneteenth. Juneteenth. It's on a Sunday, so it falls to the Monday. Observed. Yes. Okay, I will adjourn this council meeting at 8.13 p.m. Meeting adjourned.